Hey guys, welcome back to the shack. Today we're going to be talking about CNC's, more particularly one of the biggest issues or problems or the biggest part of that learning curve that is CNC's, and that's speeds and feeds. Uh, that is the biggest struggle that everybody that I've talked to has said as they move from, say, lasers over into CNC. That's the biggest part of the learning curve. And recently, if you haven't been following, uh, I have started using uh, Cadence Manufacturing's Genie Bit series. And this is a little holder that I made for them. And I've got them all numbered. And there's a reason I've got those numbered is it helps in setting up jobs and executing jobs. Because just because I'm running a job today, I may have designed that file two or three weeks ago. So having consistency as far as a numbering system for your bits is something that is really necessary to make sure you don't accidentally use the wrong bit. And if you do like I do and run different softwares, it's kind of one of those things that needs to be across all softwares. So you got to figure out what your numbering system is going to be and how to start using it. Uh, and what we're going to cover today is just going to be as far as Carbide Creates goes. I'm going to be showing you how to take the speeds and feeds that Cody has put out there for his bits that he's tested and he's ran and import those into Carbide Create and make sure that your numbering system is the way it needs to be. And that way you can also just simply have the uh, little list of numbers next to your bits and it just makes it that much quicker when it comes time to change bits and that much more uh, less subject to operator error by grabbing the wrong bit. So that's kind of a big deal. Uh, if you grab the wrong bit, that can really mess up your engraves. So that's what I'm going to be going through today is just importing those speeds and feeds into uh, Carbide Create. So stick around and we'll be right back. All right, guys. So the links and the pages that I'm going to today to get these things, I will be dropping those down in the description. Uh, you can just go down there and click that link. Uh, you can do it while you're watching the video if you want, simply by right-clicking it and hit open in a new tab. Uh, and that way we can kind of walk through it as you do the process as well. Uh, hopefully this makes it easy for you guys. A couple of folks had messaged me wanting to know when uh, Cody was going to release the speeds and feeds for Carbide Create as far as a tool database. And he had already done it. So I felt like maybe I would help Cody let everybody know that it already exists. It's already out there. So first thing we're going to do, guys, is we're going to go over to Cody's webpage, and uh, I'm going to show you where to find the speeds and feeds. But I will be putting a link down below to carry you straight over there so you can click that link. So let's get down to the screen and uh, get started. So here we are. This is uh, Cadence Manufacturing's website, and uh, that is where the speeds and feeds and the tool databases are going to be. Uh, he's got a big tab right here. Just click Tool Database Download. And uh, he supports currently, he has Carvico, Vectric, as well as Carbide Create. Uh, all three of those are supported. And so I've already opened it one time, but all you got to do, guys, is click the Carbide Create logo. It's going to take you to this Google uh, Downloads page right here. And Cody did a really good job. And this is, this is how I learned how to do it. I just simply followed his sheet. It's not difficult. Uh, to say the least, but just to show you uh, how it works, I thought we would go ahead and uh, just kind of walk you through the process. So I'm going to take this, and I'm just going to move that up to the other screen so you guys aren't staring at it. And then we're going to uh, download in a separate tab. I'm going to go ahead and download the file. There we go. So now that file is in my downloads. That part is done. Uh, I do have this uh, instructions open on another tab, so I'll be able to watch that and uh, kind of follow along. Make sure I'm not misleading anyone. So the next step, guys, open up Carbide Create. And I've already cheated and got it open. Uh, and if I could get this down on the screen and get it to where we could both see it, that'd be nice. Okay. So we have did step one. We've downloaded the CSV. All right. Open Carbide Create. Click the Help tab. All right. When we click the Help tab, we're going to have to go to About right here and then once you hit the about button you're going to see open data directory all right you're going to click that button there it's going to open up a folder location on your computer and for you guys that want to be able to just go straight in there without having to open carbide you know feel free there's there's the shortcut 
Uh, it's going to be in the app data under your user, local, Carbide 3D. But it's just as easy to click their little shortcut right there. So once you go in there, you got these two folders. You got Carbide Motion and Carbide Create underscore log. Now, just so we don't confuse anybody, I'm going to pull Cody's little paperwork over here back up. You're going to dig, double click Carbide Create. Of course, that's where your tool databases are housed. So we're gonna double click that. All right, the next step, of course, is uh, click tools, and that's gonna be right here. So we're gonna to click tools, and you'll see I've already imported the file into my machine, but let's pretend you have it. You would simply go over to your downloads. Basically, if you've got your downloads here, then you've got this screen here where the collections and stuff will be. I'm gonna rename this one to new Jenny collection because I've already went through the other one and made some adjustments on mine so I don't want to completely delete the one that I've got in mind because I've made a few little tweaks I'll uh, sped some of it up so I'm going to drop that in there and so now I should have two of them I'm going to have the Jenny collection as well as the new Jenny collection this is the one that we're doing during the video so we'll just close that out uh, everything over here I'm going to close that and uh, now all we do have to do, it says, is restart Carbide Create, and they'll be accessible. So simply hit the X, close Carbide Create. Once it's closed, reopen it. And once it reopens, we should be able to go over here to Show, show Tool Database. Click that, and you'll see here I have, now I have my original one. This is the one that I already had. I've been making some slight changes to some of the settings. Uh, and here's the one we just added. And so you've got all of the bits in here. And the way Cody has got those numbered, you're going to see number one up here. All right, number two here. Number three. So as you're doing a job, especially with the Shape of Co, uh, it's going to pop up. It doesn't tell you what the bit is on my machine, or at least I can't get it to, but it will give you this number. And so when you see that number, it'll say, please enter bit number so-and-so to continue. That just kind of verifies you uh, which bit it's talking about. And so if you've got your bits cataloged by number, like I do, uh, in your holder, then it makes it uh, that much easier. Uh, because to my knowledge, and I have looked all over these bits, he has the part number on there, has the name, has the settings, but the actual number as far as the, the tool number here is not on the exterior of the uh, packaging so that would be uh, that would be something you would want to consider uh, maybe maybe put a sharpie mark on them or I don't know laser engrave them <laughs> print you out some labels and put little small labels on them but anyway I decided to just use my holder and have it numbered so same note if something happens that you want to, let's say you have a tool database that you no longer need or you no longer use, and this will work for any tool database that's created in a CSV file format. Uh, there may or may not be all the appropriate fields, but you know other tool manufacturers also distribute these. So just because I'm using Cody's and I'm using Carbide Create to do that, then uh, it's not to say that this wouldn't work with other brands such as IDC or any of the other manufacturers. I'm gonna go in here now, and I'm going to delete this new one that we just put in here. I'm gonna leave my original one that I've been using, okay? And close Carbide Create again, relaunch it, and now when the program loads, it should not see that other tool database, and we should be back to the way we are. But this is the one I use for the most part. I do have a couple of bits that came with Shapeoko that I use but for the most part, these are these are my go-tos down here. And like I said, I've got three more coming. Uh, I've got the quarter-inch Big B coming, and uh, I'm going to be using that on some projects as well. But anyway, let's get back out of the computer, guys. All right, guys. So like I said, a couple people messaged me and just made the comment that they really wish they had the speeds and feeds for Carbide Create for the Jenny bits because they'd like to start using them. And there you go, guys. Problem solved. Now you can just go over to Cadence, order yourself some bits, you know, build you one of these little guys. So I'm either going to mark these with numbers. See, I just pulled that one out now. I don't know where it goes back. Uh, so I have to look at my list. Uh, I'm either going to mark these. So this is the skinny genie. So this is number six. I'm either going to mark 
the holders here with some labels or put one on the board over there. One of the two. But something's got to give because I am going to end up putting the wrong bit in the wrong hole if I'm not careful. So, but there you go, guys. I hope that helps for you guys that was wanting to be able to use the Jenny bits with your Shapoko, whether it's a four, whether it's a three, uh, XXL, Shapoko five, it doesn't matter. Uh, Cody's got you covered. He's got the speeds and feeds. Like I said, use those, especially the first time or two that you use those settings. I would not like push the button and walk away. I would make sure that those settings work well for your machine you may need to speed up you may need to slow down the rest of the settings you'll, you'll probably see that those work great uh, that's the only thing is sometimes the speeds and feeds because they are a little conservative and they are built to work with the fours and the shapeoko threes and the xxls and all that sometimes they seem a little slow for the five so i have to bump them up a little bit generally speaking probably about 30 percent over what cody has listed and it seems i get a really smooth cut not a lot of singing uh it doesn't it does it just sounds you know how it is it just sounds like it's cutting smoother and it's not just going too slow so probably could go faster than that but nobody is that big of a hurry here uh i just want to get the jobs done i don't want to be breaking a lot of bits and i don't want to be trashing projects because i'm going too fast so Hope this helps, guys, and be sure to check the links down below. You can pick up some of Cody's bits as well as download the tool database. Like I said, whether you're using Carbide Create, VCarve, or uh, Carvico, <laughs> he's got you covered. The tool databases are at, on his website, free to download. So go get them and uh, have fun, guys. And until next time, be safe and have a good day.